In the words of Sinead O'Connor, nothing compares to you. Yes, I know Prince wrote that song, but my point remains. Anyway, roll titles. Now normally I don't particularly do these sorts of videos because my upload schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But I was busy on Friday and didn't have time, so why not do a qualifying review? And you can watch me learn Baku in F1 2019 in the background. Yeah, it's F1 2019. I don't really buy these games often, I'm more of a simulation guy rather than a simcade, but there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And I've never actually driven Baku, so why not learn the track and crash in a comical fashion and review qualifying at the same time? I mean, after all, it was an exciting qualifying. Baku seems to throw something into the mix, and this time it's red flags. Lots and lots of red flags. Four of them, in fact. And looking at the free practice form, it looked like for the second race in a row, the Mercedes cars would be in the bottom part of the top ten. This being that Hamilton's third place in the third practice session was made to look good by the fact he's got a huge toe down the mammoth flat-out run between the final corner over the start line and down to turn one. If anybody was going to be the favourite for pole, it would have been Max. And the toe is important at Baku, it might even be more important than Monza. At Baku you can benefit bigly from getting into the slipstream of the guy ahead in qualifying, your own teammate or otherwise. And if your teammate is out, you've got to try and latch onto another team's car and other teams won't be so friendly with helping you out. You need every mile an hour you can get, especially if your car is down on power or high drag to get through the middle section and up through the old town. And with Mercedes being as bad as they were on Friday, you would have forgiven for thinking one of them would have been out before the top 10 shootout, but Mercedes has found ways to work magic before. Singapore 2018 springs to mind when Lewis did that lap. This time round it wasn't as impressive, but considering where they could have been, they'd consider it to be better than enough. Lewis was able to nab second on the grid thanks to a toe from Bottas, although their toe didn't work out as well as the one Leclerc had from Hamilton when they put in the third session bank collapse. And bank collapse were all that were needed here. Like I said, four red flags over the three sessions. One because Stroll had crashed at turn 15, which is where Max had hit the wall in practice. Giovinazzi crashed there in an unrelated incident when the session restarted, and when the red flags came out for Giovinazzi, Lando Norris was collared by the stewards for not returning to the pit lane. And I'd love to show you the footage and analyse it, but the copyright bots are always watching. And responding to a tweet posted by the racist Scott Mitchell earlier on today, I said, well what was he supposed to do and where was he supposed to go? Hit the brakes as soon as he processed the red flag and come to a stop with acres of space and nowhere near the crash site and then slowly and safely make his way back? Or does he fire the car into the pit lane with a point naught 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 one second reaction time and potentially be out of control locking brakes, or get penalised for speeding in the pit lane, or wreck the car entering the pit lane and have that potentially hurt somebody. I get that the FIA takes its red flag procedures very seriously, but drivers aren't computers. You can't expect them to react as quickly as that, especially when travelling at 190 miles an hour upwards. It's a harsh penalty, I think. I think in these sorts of situations they need to have more leeway, because you've got to see the flag thing on the side of the track, then you've got to process it and then react accordingly. Again, travelling at 190 miles an hour, that's not easy to do. But then life was made worse for McLaren when Ricardo put his car in the wall, with Ricardo's time in that car not looking very fun at all at the minute, but maybe that's a video for another day. Is Ricardo's career over? Pfft, Rosberg me. But then in the third qualifying session, Leclerc shocked everybody by putting his Ferrari on pole for the second race in succession, thanks to a perfectly timed toe off the back of Hamilton's car. But unlike Monaco, Leclerc should be able to take the start for this one, and it's the second race in a row he's bagged pole for and then had the session stopped because of a red flag. On this occasion, Yuki Tsunoda had binned it with Sainz following in sympathy, as most of the cars were on their outlaps to have one more attempt at setting a hot lap but the session was red flagged for the fourth time and qualifying abandoned. So it meant that the front three would be Leclerc, Hamilton and Verstappen. 
Max was frustrated but later said, it is what it is, while Leclerc said that his lap wasn't even that good. And Hamilton and Mercedes breathed a sigh of relief. So how did that time get found? Hamilton went low drag, while Bottas went for more downforce. And while Bottas couldn't get the car to do what he wanted it to, Lewis was able to adapt through the twisty bits and take advantage of Mercedes power and a slippery car on that massive straight. The Mercedes longer run pace is better than their single lap pace, and if he can clear Leclerc off the line into turn 1, it should serve him well, as Leclerc and Verstappen will no doubt battle in behind. It will also be the last race where we see these super flexy rear wings, although we might need to look at that in more detail after the race and see where that leaves Red Bull who seem to be at the centre of this row. Horner says that Red Bull should be stronger come race day when one lap pace doesn't matter so much, while Mercedes will need to utilise their strategic nous to get them through. So hopefully, it should be a decent fight, and with Claire in the middle, anything can happen, and it usually does. But while all the focus was on Max Lewis and Charles at the front, things in the other Red Bull and Mercedes didn't seem as rosy. Comments on social media were abound that Valtteri was lobbed under the bus for Lewis, but Checo wasn't on the pace compared to his teammate in a decent car either. Perez was 7th with a 141.9 compared to Max's 141.5 while Bottas was 1.2 off Lewis due to his higher drag setup and not feeling comfortable in the car. But in Checo's favour though, he will be starting 6th after Norris's penalty that will drop the McLaren to 9th, while Bottas will remain 10th. And Bottas didn't go sub 1 minute 42 all afternoon. But Mercedes aren't being held down after the disaster that was Monaco. People will say that this qualifying session was them taking off the sandbags, but what we need to factor in here is that there are only two street circuits on the calendar now this season, now Singapore has been dropped, and the Mercedes is the longest of these aircraft carrier sized cars that we have today. I'll overlay an image of the size difference between different eras of car on the screen for you. A car that's as long as that Mercedes ain't getting around tight narrow tracks. It's just not happening. The car has been designed for, in inverted commas, real tracks, and expect them to be back and doing normal Mercedes stuff at Paul Ricard. And if you think that Singapore was cancelled because the Mercs can't handle street circuits, grow up. It's not like there's a contagious virus going around at the minute. Anyway, Lewis also got Bottas' assistance to help his push, but I guess that's the toe for you. And some people on social media were calling for the cars to go out and only do one lap with nobody else around them, probably because Max wasn't on pole, but, you know, we can just add that to the list of things that Max has been hard done by, in inverted commas. Yeah, Formula 1 fans on Facebook just do be added. But expect the same stuff at Monza in a few months' time. Remember the Carnage Fest that was qualifying from 2019? Any of us could have probably walked around faster. But Michael Massey did warn them about doing such things, and you know everybody seemed to have behaved, but anyhow, that's my quick thoughts on qualifying today for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Leave your thoughts on things in the description box and get a discussion going. And if you've been here before, you know the drill. That's exactly what I'm here for. It's what this series is here for. I present ideas in an argument, and you post conspiracy theories in the comments. Again, that's how Formula 1 social media works, right? But anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like the video. If you want more, subscribe with the bell on. And hopefully the race will be interesting enough for me to contribute 8 minutes of my voice to reviewing it, but who knows at this point. A huge thanks to the patrons on this channel via Patreon, and if you wish to join them or just join in the Discord stuff, follow my Twitter. Uh, yeah, links are in the description, is basically what I'm trying to say. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward. Have a great day wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video, which will be Monday. So goodbye.